Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Everything Scuba Quick Tips Edition. Yep, you heard me right. We're going to start bringing you some short, a uh, few minute videos on uh, quick tips uh, concentrated on maybe areas that we think would maybe help you in your diving endeavors. Uh, our subscriber base has been growing. We really appreciate the support. If you're a subscriber out there, we want to give a little bit back to our community with some extra content. Uh, also, if you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button down below. Join us for every uh, episode of uh, Everything Scuba. So today we're going to talk about the fact that uh, we're uh, dive instructors here in the Midwest. Uh, it's getting colder. The leaves are changing. They're falling off the trees. If you live in northern climate, and you want to extend your diving career, well, that's about time to start putting on your, your dry suit. It's going to keep you nice and toasty warm, and it's a fun way to dive too. And so specifically, we're going to talk about wrist seals on this. I'm kind of skinny wristed. Also, when I move my fingers, I have deep little grooves that occur there, so sometimes I'll still get a little bit of trickle of water in uh, during a dive if I'm not careful. Number one is making sure that you have the correct size wrist seal in your dry suit and it's installed correctly. Um, this is the smallest silicone wrist seal that is made for this particular uh, dry suit, which is an aqualung fusion. Um, and so what are the ways that we can make sure that we stay dry in our dry suit? So first off is this system. This is the Antares uh, system made by SciTech. And so uh, you can attach a glove to this. It actually clips on to the dry suit. It forms a nice watertight seal. Uh, you can wear a glove inside here so your hand's going to stay dry and it's going to stay nice and toasty warm. The one downside to this is one, there's a little expense involved in, in putting this system together. Uh, two, uh, sometimes I find that I feel I lose some tactile sensitivity wearing a, a glove this thick. And so on some dives, depending on what we're doing, I might not want to wear gloves or I might want to wear wet gloves. And that means that my wrist seal is going to be exposed to the water. So we've got a couple quick little tips of how to make sure that this stays nice and dry and that we're not going to let anything trickle in there. So stick around for a few minutes. Here's the deal. Kind of skinny, skinny little wristed guy like me. And then also right here, you can see that when I move my fingers, sometimes you get kind of deep grooves in there. So even with that seal, and this is the smallest seal uh, that I could buy, I still sometimes get a little trickle of water in there. So a couple ways that we can get around that. One is to maybe use a dry glove system that actually attaches to this. Occasionally I want to use some wet gloves, gives me a little bit more tactile sensitivity under the water. So uh, one of the cheap and easy ways that I found is, you guys have all brought, bought uh, broccoli from the uh, grocery store and they come with these kind of blue rubber bands, right? So what I found is these are nice and broad so they're not going to cut off circulation. You don't want to be so tight that you're going to hurt fingers and cut off circulation but what I can do <clears throat> is rotate this guy on and I make sure it's still nice and broad and that just kind of helps seal that off it's not too tight I still have circulation in my fingers uh, and uh, I'm not going to get water leakage in there so that's a pretty easy way to get around it so second option is actually this is something I found at DEMA um, made by Apollo it's called BioSeal uh, they make kind of a it's kind of a weird tacky rubberized material uh, it's latex free so you don't have to worry about that if you have latex sensitivities uh, but the way this works is uh, Josh is my cameraman here he'll give me a little close-up on the wrist so I'm going to stretch this over one hand and we're just going to rotate that on and this forms a nice seal between the actual material of the seal of my dry suit and then lays right on the skin just like so. So you're overlapping the skin and the dry suit. That way if I wiggle my fingers, I'm not getting any leakage up in there. I'll leave. So guys, those are the two main methods I like to use to make sure that my wrist seal stays sealed. And so we've got the Apollo Biofilm, which is kind of a weird rubbery material. Uh, on that installation, we showed you uh, where I actually install that over the top of my seal. Uh, on the Apollo website, you can even see that they sometimes will have you install that on the wrist first so the seal sits on top of it. I found it works well in both positions, so I wouldn't worry about that. Um, we will drop the link down below. There's certainly some expense involved in purchasing this material. Um, you can see the price down below in the link when you go to it. Uh, or, alternately, you know, less expensive method that works just as well, I have found, is using the uh, broccoli broad rubber bands. 
if it fits your wrist appropriately. We want to make sure we're not cutting off circulation to our fingers and hand, and so definitely want to check on that. Uh, these work really well for my skinny little wrist. They might not fit your wrist so well, and so you might find a different way to do that. But we just want to give you a couple little tips to make sure that that dry suit stays dry. Stick around for some more quick tip videos in the future. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you saw, smash that like button down below. If you want to join us on every video, hit that subscribe button. And also, check out these cool diving videos below. We'll see you next time on Everything Scuba. Side mount's awesome. Just don't carry your stuff.